So today guys we are taking a look at Tango 3D slicing software from Voxel Dance. Once you import your model, in most cases this software is going to immediately want to repair it. Um, I've seen that with pretty much every model I've imported so far. So don't think that something is wrong, it's just this, this program is incredibly picky about geometry. Um, once you have the model in the application, First of all, you're going to notice that the application itself is incredibly different from every other slicer application. It's bright, white. The tool menus are kind of all listed at the top. Um, the preparing tab is the entire area that you start in, and the slicing area is the secondary tab, which is interesting because they've taken more of a universal approach to the software, and I'll, I'll get more into that a bit later. Like I said, the scale is important, so definitely make sure to look at the scaling on the parts because that's going to be what you determine when you create the auto supports. Now again, the whole purpose of this demonstration was to show how the auto supports are created and how this program actually makes decent auto supporting, whereas I have never seen any other application do decent auto supporting that actually works. Just the auto supporting may be a little finessing here and there and you're good to go. In most cases, I would say no, don't do it this program has actually proven me wrong however there are so many other things with this application i don't love because of its again i'm going to get into some of that later but there's some things that it's done right and some things that it's done wrong the support module itself uh, is a support script so essentially what you do is you program the script by adding in the parameters your angle your critical angle again these are things that aren't really even discussed in other applications. Um, it's things we know about, like, you know, what's your critical angle, 40 to 45 degrees. So in this case, we chose, you know, 45 degrees is the, is the default critical angle. Um, you know, it gives you the, your other parameters, your bar, your diameter size, your base, which is like your raft. Um, you can choose different types of raft styles, which are different shapes, which have different types of holes in them, which allow, um, you know, the uh, uh, less force on the um, FEP, so you have less pull. It uh, gives a little little bit of, a, of a, a breather there because that way you have some, it's almost like ventilation, I want to say, in a way, in, at least in those beginning phases where you're printing that thick raft, you know, when you're, you're putting all that material down. Um, those will stress the FEP a little bit. So that helps. That's why sometimes I will use a uh, line triangle support system rather than a shape raft or um, the larger rafts. Sometimes I use the rectangles if it's a really big piece. Now, the tool sets are pretty vast, and also some terms and phrasing on some of the tool sets have been a little bit, they're a little different. If you are mostly used to resin printing, some of the terms are, to me, uh, they, they, they are for FDM, like there's some features in here that I think you can use for both resin and FDM, so that is an interesting thing that this is a combined software. I believe Prusa Slicer is a similar um, thing where you can, you can do both. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, a lot of the other slicers besides Leechy, G2, and Photon. <clears throat> Those are kind of the three that I have spent most of my time with. And honestly, I spent a hundred percent of my time in Leechy, so that is really my go-to for most of it. Um, the editing is really weird for these, for the supports. Um, like I said, they have these different presets. We chose to use one on this particular one that was set up for a 60 millimeter figure, uh, or rather between 30 and 60, or 36 and 60. So I chose the 60 one as it was the bigger option, not the smaller option. Uh, if it was a much smaller figurine, I would have gone with 36, but once they start breaching that size, then it's probably a safe bet to go with the larger supporter option um, to make sure that you have enough support. Um, of course, once the auto supports are done, like I said, you can't edit them, you can move around the dots. Um, although I did find that was glitchy as well, and there were times where I would edit and apply and things just wouldn't move or wouldn't apply to the actual model, so that was also equally frustrating. And not sure if it was just the program kind of forcing me to just follow its plan for support. It's like, <laughs> you can't deviate, sorry buddy. Um, but there was some definitely disconnect there between if I wanted to get in there and control it, I definitely felt like I had a lack of that kind of control. And again, you know, this is me using software for about a week uh, at most. So 
there's definitely um, some things that I could learn, but also I feel like there's there's some issues there that need to be worked out, or at least I, I, I don't love them. Now, of course, once you're done, you, we're not gonna slice in this, I'm just gonna export this as an STL, and then we're gonna pop right over to Lychee. And we're gonna take a look at this file, and I'm gonna show you exactly some of the reasons why this isn't perfect, but why it will work with a little bit of extra effort. And honestly, it's not terrible if you've got a ton of minis that you need to support, and you gotta get them done real quick. This is a very interestingly fast way to get them done, and then you just need a little bit of time in your slicer checking out islands, just making sure that the software didn't miss any, which by the way, you will you will find islands. Um, okay, now Leechy's always gonna complain about the file needing to be repaired as well, so that's another thing you're gonna have to deal with. Even though the file was already repaired, it still has holes, again. Uh, there's something happening with geometry there that um, is behind the scenes there that I'm not even really uh, fully seeing. Um, honestly, one of the biggest complaints that I have between working with uh, Lychee, Chi2, Photon, and now Tango is that Tango has decided to take more of a universal approach, like I said, rather than a linear approach to slicing. And to be fair, it's different, but also odd to switch to if you're used to the linear approach that pretty much all other slicing software uses. Whereas you have a layout area, prep area, and an export area. Tangle uses general larger tool set, very smart auto supporting, and some nifty tools for hollowing, infill for FDM, honeycombing, holes, removing the holes, using those for print. There's a lot of neat stuff there, but to the new users just getting into this, Tango is a vast sea of stuff, and I think it's too daunting. The auto support features are great, but I almost feel like they need to have a light version of the software that is either just made for resin printing or specifically a module that is just made for auto supporting um, and allow the user to then export the model out. There's, there's just so much going on in that software, I think that even that would be difficult to do in its current state. But it's cool. There's some functionality to the auto supporting, but as you can see, it does not get all the islands. It will not do a perfect job. You will need to support some additional areas yourself. Uh, this isn't a terrible thing, but it definitely means it's not 100% doing its job 100% of the time, although a good 92% of the time, I would say it is actually doing a really good job at doing the supports. Uh, two of the first models I supported had no islands whatsoever, printed just fine, had no issues. The third one, I needed to add some additional supports. And then the fourth one, actually some of the support structures itself failed in on itself, pancaked, but the model itself still survived. Now again, I don't know if that's a functionality of some of the way that these support towers work. If part of it collapses, the other parts can still maintain the model. If that's so, that's pretty cool because that actually worked to my advantage and the model still actually printed. I didn't even get any sticking or any objects cured to the FEP. So there was no damage or anything either. All in all, it wasn't a bad experience, and even that being a partial fail, the model itself still succeeded. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and keep checking the rest of the model here for the rest of the islands. There aren't that many, although it did miss some, and the eye actually over the eye in this area is a little islandy spot. And I'm just gonna do my little mini support trick there because um, we don't want to put anything heavy on this guy's face. And we don't want fusing either, which will happen a lot, especially with the uh, DLP resins. They happened, they, they fuse at, a, clo at a, a little bit of further distance than some of the other ones because of their uh, ability to uh, cure quite quickly. You'll get a lot more fusion problems. I've had to kind of adjust some things using the DLP resins. They're very good, great detail, Wonderful, flu wonderful fluidity, fluidity, but uh, yeah, a little, little adjustment, little learning curves with everything, I guess, right? Okay. Anyway, I think my overall takeaway from after doing a few successful prints using the support function is that it does work very well in in, in all actuality. Uh, it's not perfect, like I said. It does not do islands well. That is easy enough to handle once you get the file into another slicer. 
Or you can even use Tango itself for that, though that process is a much longer, weirder process because of the way the editing system works in Tango 3D. I didn't love it. Maybe you do. Maybe that's the way your jam works. Personally, I am used to the way every other software does it, where you literally lay down the supports. Um, yeah, it's just strange the way that works. So I'm still planning on using Leechy as my go-to for slicing, and honestly, just because I'm familiar with it a lot more, the settings make sense to me. The terminology makes sense to me. It has the terms that I'm used to. Uh, in Tango, they've decided to change the terminology of light off delay to wait. So there are now terms that refer to wait before cure or wait after cure. Um, and some of the other additional settings and names have been modified a little bit. I'm, I'm assuming to suit whatever the design of the application, whoever came up with this application, this was you know their concept. But to be fair, this industry already has some terms that we are used to. So to go and change that, I think, is kind of strange. Um, it's not terrible, but it is kind of strange. So if you are used to using other slicer softwares, this is going to feel like you are on another planet in some cases. Some of it will feel familiar, but other parts will feel completely strange. But if you're just using it for a little auto support tool, you're not terrible. Honestly, it's a, it might be a little pricey for the monthly charge for that. So I don't know, I believe we paid uh, 20 bucks to get a month for this. So I think that's what the, I'll have to check, but I think it was about that price. If you guys want, I'll put a link to the software in the description as well. So you guys can check it out if you want. Um, play around with it check it out let me know your thoughts it's, it's definitely interesting i definitely have to spend some more time with it to really fully kind of make judgments um on it 100 percent. right now i'm going to say it's not my favorite thing it does do some pretty wild things with these supports but as you can see they're not perfect i mean they're literally balancing some of the parts very precariously um <laughs> and i'm not really sure that that would be the way i would do it personally so you know, again, these just these require a little adjustment here and there to make sure that the things are set up the way that, you know, you would want them. Um, also, like I said, some of the angles of some of those little diamond patterns there, uh, the cross patterns with the supports will actually create areas that technically are, um, are at a 40, 40 degree or greater angle and can actually, you know, cause stress. So, not sure that is 100% um awesome the whole way around and again that's that critical angle so those are things that can be adjusted um but like i said i've had success with the prints so uh, i'm not being too harsh on the auto supporting it's it's done a decent job you just need to go in and kind of clean it up a little bit Let me lie. I also want to remind everybody that we are still doing our Halloween special on free shipping. Um, as long as you spend $45 or more on either our main website or our Etsy shop, we are doing free shipping on that. So please take advantage. We are also still doing the Halloween giveaway until the end of the month. You have until the 31st to submit that subscribe and put a comment on any one of these videos and just say, give me my minis and uh, you are entered. And we're looking for you guys to subscribe and comment. So tell us what you think. Anyway, I will be doing some more videos on Tango 3D. I am going to be checking this software out a bit more. I am going to be analyzing it as closely as my brain can possibly dig into this. So do check us out. Like I said, subscribe. Ring the bell if you want notifications on those videos. And all the other stuff that we do try to bring to you guys every single week. Uh, some weeks we're going to have tons of videos, other weeks it's going to be a little bit less, but it all depends on how much time I have to devote to this stuff. Anyway, that is it for this. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll leave you guys with the end of this, and uh, see you all real soon.